We are going to tackle our first question now for the panel, and this has come in, and uh, it's a very simple question, but it's a very big question as well. And the question is this. How do I know we are following the right God? How do I know we are following the right God? What a question <laughs> so i'm going to throw this open to the uh, to the guys here um who wants to who wants to get us started i believe i'm doing that for you luke okay go for it dave okay um good question actually i don't know why i've not heard this in church before i've, I've heard other people who are non-believers talking about it but i've never heard christians talking about it the first thing is this you could ask the question where do we learn about god where do we get the information about god and every religion has its religious book. We have the Bible, the, uh, the Islam has Quran, the Hindus have Vedas, Sutras, etc. So um, with the question that really has to revolve around the Bible, its integrity, its authenticity, its accuracy. And I believe there are certain um, tests that we need to apply which show how these books do. And the first test would be what I would call reason, the, the, the test of reason. For example, um, the fact that uh, the prophecies in the Bible tell of long-term um, things that are going to happen hundreds and hundreds of years later. So you've got uh, prophecies that talk about, in the Old Testament, talk about um, Jesus being born in Bethlehem, in uh, being brought up in Nazareth, uh, being betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, etc., etc., and they're all there hundreds and hundreds of years. The Bethlehem, for example, one is in Micah, and it's 700 plus years old. So that's a, an, that's a first test. The second test is science. If God is a creator of heaven and earth, then he surely must know how it works. And here's where it's an interesting thing. Because, for example, uh, the Quran uh, teaches that the earth is flat and uh, that the, uh, it's, and the sky is suspended above it by Allah. So it doesn't fall on top of the flat earth. Uh, so one has to ask that. the question. One has to ask the question why the uh, you know such a god would teach that when he knows full well what the the, uh, the earth is like and so on. Um, and when it comes to science, it's fascinating how many scientific um, facts and issues are in there. The oldest book in the Bible, for example, Job, <coughs> has got the, um, an account of what we call. Hydrology, hydrological cycle, you know, the thing is the, the, the heat comes on the sun, from the sun onto the water, it draws up moisture, carries mm -hmm. it into clouds, brings the clouds, come over the mountain, drops rain, goes back down to the rivers, goes back in the sea, and the cycle goes round and round. That's in Job, and that's long before um, it was something which I think in the 17th or 18th century was discovered. So that's an amazing thing. I'm not able to obviously amplify a lot of this, but this is keys. You can look at it yourself. The third area is history and uh, archaeological finds. For example, the fact that the walls of Jericho fell flat. Nobody believed that archaeologically until they found it. One particular archaeologist, a guy called Sir William Ramsey, who was an atheist, thought he could disprove the Bible by going and digging, using the Bible as a basis. And because uh, there was no, at that stage, there was none of those seven cities you know of, of revelation um that were around nobody yeah, believed yeah. they existed and he started digging found one went on to another found two as a consequence of his digs he found all seven and as a consequence of his digs he came to know god a savior so amazing kind of thing fourth test is unity all the books 66 of them 40 plus authors uh, all written over 1600 years and yet they have one theme and that's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, if you take other books, I've mentioned the Quran, where it gets it wrong. Hindu book, for example, uh, it says that all energy on earth is drawn from the sun. That's where it all comes from, which clearly isn't true. Um, the Taoist holy book says there are 13 members of your body through which death can come. Uh, people, the doc medical people will tell you that's far too many. You can't have death from all from 13 parts of your body. Um, Buddhists say earthquakes are caused by water uh, being, wind moving the water, sorry, and the water moving the land, which again is not the case. Even if you take something like the Mormons, the Mormons say that Jesus visited North America, um, which, for which there's no evidence. 
So the key here is how authentic is the book that talks about God. That's mm -hmm. the key. That's mm -hmm. not the only basis for believing that our God is, is the right God. Jesus believed in our God as well. Talked about uh, scriptures in the Old Testament and so on that authenticated that actually said he was God. Um, so he was either mad or bad as, as uh, was it? Um, I can't remember the guy. Lewis. C.S. Lewis, um, Lewis said that. Lewis. Yeah, C.S. Lewis. Yeah. Uh, or else, or else, and he authenticated his claim to be God by living a sinless life. He actually said, "Can anyone convince me of sin?" And nobody could, and they would have loved to. So there's just a few points I could go on, um, but the, I think the key that, that's there is when people follow the Christian God, their lives are changed. And down the centuries, millions of people have been changed by God. Hmm. Um, it's not an empty religion. It's not a, a religion of works. And it's a wonderful thing because it's actually a, us not reaching up to God and desiring to be in touch with him like all the other religions. It's God coming down to us, which hmm. is wonderful. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Dave. Um, let me throw something else in here, um, just, to be, just to be contrary because... Uh, uh, someone's got to be. <laughs> um, and I don't know if anyone would want to pick up on this. Um, it's all very well for us to to say that, and and, and there was a great points raised by Dave there. Um, but we are in a Christian nation, or a nation that is predominantly shaped by Christianity. Um, we might have a very different mindset if we were born somewhere else. Isn't it arrogance to say that we have the right answer and everybody else is wrong? Does anybody want to throw in on that? Uh, can I do a quick pick-up on that? Yeah, of course. Um, it's a side issue to it, but it's of fundamental importance. One of the, um, the most common things that people say is, well, maybe they're all true. M maybe, maybe every religion is just a different path to the top of the mountain. Hmm. And... Um, I think it's probably the biggest challenge we face because we live in a world that doesn't really believe in real truth. Um, and because of that, it, it just sort of, it's a very warm sentiment. You know, all religions have something in them uh, and they all can get us there in the end. I, I just want to argue on the basis, first of all, of real truth. Uh, and that is the fact that either Jesus was the son of God or he wasn't. Either God created the earth or he didn't. Yep. Either God exists or he does not exist. Mm -hmm. What you can't have is diametrically opposite statements, both holding to be true. So, you know, um, Jesus said he is the only way to God. Now, that's either true or it isn't true. You know, I could imagine some people picking at the edges and, well, maybe he's a way to the truth. But Jesus said he was the way. Uh, he, he didn't give any leeway for any other route to be find harmony with the Father mm -hmm. uh, other than through him. Yeah. And um, I'm sure some of the other guys will pick up some of those other points that you've asked and that specific question you asked. But I think as a foundation before that happens, it's good to try and understand Christianity is either true, in which case believe it and accept it, or it's not true, in which case, for goodness sakes, dump it, get rid of it. Mm. Like Paul said, um, if, if Christ didn't rise from the dead, we're of all men most miserable. Jesus yes. either rose from the dead or he didn't. Now, I believe the evidence and my personal experience, but the evidence laid upon layer of it proves the truth of that. But it's important that people come to a decision. Don't wally around in the shallow end trying to <laughs> pretend that everything's going to be okay and you can accept a bit of everything from everybody. You know, understand that some things can be true or not true. And that's fundamental. And I'll put one last thing in with the great point that David made. Um, there are 53 people who archaeologists and historians said in the Bible were fantasy characters that now have been proven true through Say that number again? 53? 53. 53 people who, are, who, who history and archaeologists said couldn't be, it couldn't be real characters. In the last few years, a lot of the digs that have been taking place in um, 
in Jerusalem who proved there was a city of David, who proved Hezekiah was real. The, the court seal for Hezekiah was found last year. Uh, and 53 characters that everybody had written off, but the Bible said were real characters in real history and have now been proven to be true. Um, you know, and that's a fascinating study in its own right. So it backs up what David was saying, made some great points. That's great. That's great. Does anybody else want to want to want to want to throw in there? Can, can I, I just say? Yeah. Go, go for that. Sorry, I beg your pardon. I'm interrupting, Ali. No, um, no, go um, I, th I think the question, in a sense, is: Is this true? How can I know it's? I know it's true. And um, it, sorry, I'm oh, just watching the television, and it's it's uh, it's out of sync with the uh, right. with us. <laughs> Um, r really, the um, for instance, the Hindus say that truth is elusive. Buddhists say truth is hidden from us. Uh, Mohammedans, I guess, or Muhammad said, you know, that he pointed to the truth. But Jesus was the only one who said, I am the truth. Mm -hmm. I am the life, you know, the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. um, and... The second Dave's point, <laughs> still Dave's here now, was that uh, it's either true or it isn't true. Now, it's not a con conclusive argument, but you, but I would say, what does it produce in someone's life? It, if I was going to buy a product and somebody was, se several people were trying to sell me competing products, I, I would listen to what they had to say. I would have to evaluate it for myself, but I would maybe interview other people who'd, who would use this product or whatever, yeah. and just see if the claims stacked up. And I think if you'd actually talk to Christians, and for that matter, even talk to people of other faiths, I think you'd find that the Christian would come off as satisfied that they had found the truth, yeah. and that their life would demonstrate there'd been a, an incredible difference. Dave's just recently written that book and made a film as well of the life of, of Shane. And uh, we've all been absolutely amazed at a transformation that has taken place in a person's life who has accepted the claims of Christ and come to him, mm -hmm. turned his life around. So that you, you can test it on a whole number of areas. Dave brought some really good points out. The first, Dave, you know, on, on, on the reliability of scripture and, and, and things like that. But just coming in from an experience point of view, it works. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's important. That's great. Thank yeah. you for that. Thank you for that, Alan. I guess the the, the, the uh, a lot of it comes down to as well is when when you're comparing or when you when you're looking at uh, at other faiths. In no other faith is there anybody quite like Jesus. No, no one who made no. the claims Jesus made. No one who backed them up the way Jesus backed them. Up. I mean, Jesus stands absolutely unique, doesn't he? Um, yeah. I don't know, Cliff. Do you want to? Do you want to? Yeah, I think. Um, <clears throat> I think what we, the question was: How do we know we're serving the right God? Mm -hmm. Well, Alan's just said there we want to serve a God that works, a God that's alive. And you know, it's not just other faiths. There is inbuilt in man a desire to worship something. So we'll all have gods that we worship, mm -hmm. um, small g. Even going back to Paul's day, I can remember going to Athens and standing on Mars Hill um, in Athens, and there was a, 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 a uh, something there when Paul, in Paul, uh, an altar, I think it was, to the unknown God. So there were many people, in, even in Paul's day, who had different types of gods. Some worshipped the sun, the moon, the stars, trees, there's in, in built in man a desire to worship. Yeah. The, the, the fact is with Christianity, we are serving a God who is alive and works mm. and changes lives and changes situations. It's not a dead God. You know, it's not a God of wood, hay or stubble. It's not a God of stone that can't speak, or, you know, it's a living God that we serve. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things in the Bible says, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only. 
shall you serve. Yeah. So, and that's and that's the key, is isn't it? It's that difference that uh, you know we we don't worship a god of stone. We don't worship a god made by human hands. We worship a god who lived as one of us. A god who is entirely different. A god who shaped the. I, I, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, you get some people who are just obnoxious atheists, like Ricky Gervais, for example. Just obnoxious <laughs> with it. And they'll, they'll say things like, um, like, what about, um, um, I don't know, Baal, you know. Do you believe in Baal? And he goes, well, no, of course I don't believe in Baal. So, well, the way you don't believe in him is the way I don't believe in your God. And But you can't compare... In the same way, because there is no other example in history quite like Jesus, the impact Jesus made, the 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 the, the difference, the claims Jesus made, the, the the resurrection of Jesus is absolutely unique in history. And you can try and compare. Oh, Zeus came down and pretended to be a man. Jesus wasn't pretending. You know, there's no comparison in any other faith. For Jesus, so much so that every other faith has to come up with an excuse for who Jesus was, while trying to somehow put you distant to him. They have to say, "Oh, he was a prophet," or "Oh, he was." You can't ignore Jesus. You just can't ignore Jesus. And I realise I've just totally took over the conversation there, so I'm gonna throw it back to somebody <laughs> else there. But I think you're right, Luke. That we have, if you like, a human face that is historically authentic. Yeah, Jesus did live. It's authenticated in history. He did die and he rose again. And the evidence for his rising again is so strong that many, many people have come to faith who were atheists or people who didn't believe. Lee Strobel, yeah. for example, a well-known yes. uh, apologist. And he did it. He was a lead uh, correspondent. I think it was the New York Times or something like that. He was amazing. And he decided to bring down Christianity by investigating the authenticity of the, of the resurrection. As a consequence of two years study, he came to faith because the evidence is so strong. If you just take it in an objective view, you look at the evidence, and that in itself, that's, that's God. Jesus says he's God. I and the Father are one. And um, and that's the key, because he is he is the one you can look at. He's the one you can see. That's what God looks like. That's how he acts. Mm. Yeah. It's, I not think it's, blind faith, is it? it's not blind faith that we have. We've got no. faith based on historic a fact. You know, um, I think it was Frank Morrison. He 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 was a lawyer in Manchester, and he set out to disprove the resurrection. Hmm. And uh, he started to write a book. And about three chapters into the book, because of all the evidence that he'd got, you know, acquired, he ended up writing a book. And by the end of the book, he was a converted man because of the facts of the resurrection. Undisputable. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Does anyone want... Uh, we probably should wrap this up fairly soon. Has anybody else got a few final thoughts? Because, um, again, it, it's... it's it's it's. It, I'm sure everybody's been in this position before where you do have that doubt, where that thought creeps in. What if I'm wrong? What words would you just... Like, a few final words would you give of reassurance to somebody? I would actually suggest they read the Gospel of John. Gospel of John was written specifically that you may know that he's the Son of God. And uh, that's Jesus, you know. And I found that when people read, actually, when they read the Gospel of John, the text itself is self-authenticating. You can feel it inside. And I've talked to people who aren't Christians who have had that experience over and over again. When I was at Newcastle uh, studying, uh, the guy who headed up the Christian Union, that was his major way of uh, encouraging people to come to faith, read the Gospel of John, and then you go back and talk to them. And it was amazing how many people came to faith as a consequence, because the text itself witnesses. You have this kind of inside thing that says, that's true, that's real. Yeah. Fantastic. Wonderful. Any, anybody else want to throw a few final, a few final thoughts in? Mm. I think C.S. Lewis, uh, he didn't actually want to become a Christian, from what I've read of him in, in, in some of his books. Um, but he said that he, there would never was a more reluctant Christian than him. He was mm. dragged, kicking and screaming into the kingdom of God 
Yeah, he because said he, he was. He felt it. like he was chased by the hound of heaven. <laughs> yes, he couldn't deny it. It was true, inescapable. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. That's wonderful, Alan. Um, anybody? Anyone else? Just one last thought. No, no. Go on, Dad. You know, you, I, I can't believe you haven't got a final thought. <laughs> 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 There's two realms here of proof. There's the intellectual realm. And, uh, you know, we, we've talked about a lot of things uh, tonight that are in that realm. And, and, but yet we've also picked up on some of the points too, which is the realm of experience. And, um, I, I, you know, I think there is, a, there is a case for praying with one eye open. A skeptical prayer where you turn around and say, look, if the answer to this prayer is real and honest, then it will change my life. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That sort of mm -hmm. prayer that says, seriously. Yeah. And then the prayer goes like this. God, if you're there, please mm -hmm. bring me to yourself. Organize events. Bring me, to, bring me to the place where I get faith. And if somebody prays, even if they don't believe, and that's what I mean by one eye open. But if they're sincere in saying that, you know, Lord, I'm, if you're there, please. Because that's what happened to me. Hmm. You know, that's what happened to me. Um, I had the most profound moment of my life happened after I prayed like that. You know, I'd, I'd been a believer as a younger person. But, you know, I drifted off into drugs and a dissolute lifestyle and... And, 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 you know, I, I'd taken an overdose by accident. I was, you know, uh, took a huge overdose, was, was puking and, uh, well, mess. And in that moment, I prayed out to God and said, look, I don't know whether you can forgive me. Uh, if you're real, if you're there, change me. And instantly i was i was delivered from an overdose of drugs i was stone cold sober in a split second of time mm -hmm. after over 300 tablets of speed i should have been carried off the guy that was with us ended up in the mental asylum his mind went as well as his body um but god changed me in my life in a moment in time after i prayed sincerely but not knowing whether i dared believe and I believe that God responds to those who turn to him. You take one step towards God and you'll find God is running down the hill to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And that is true. That's, it's that personal experience. It's how do I know Jesus is Lord? It's because I've met him. It's as simple. He's, he's touched my life. He's changed my life. He's, I've encountered his Holy Spirit. You know, I, there's been things in my life that I cannot deny and could never go back from, could never, ever find myself in a place where I don't believe because I've seen too much. It's, you know, you, you can't go back. You can't go back to Egypt, as it were. And uh, thank you guys for, for, for... Oh, Cliff, sorry. Go for it, Cliff. Yeah, I, I think in the, in the heart of man, there's a, there's a quest for God. People don't know what they're looking for. But at the end of the day, it's God. And I know when I found him, some of my mates said to me, I'll give you six weeks and you'll be back where you were. You know? And I can remember saying, only a fool goes on looking for what he's already found. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And once you've found him, that everything you're looking for in life, the, the, that missing piece, that happiness, that sense of... Uh, peace and you know you find it all when you find Jesus yeah yeah but see he is that missing piece yeah yeah absolutely right wonderful wonderful thank you everyone for for those answers there I hope that helped tackle that question for for everyone who is watching